Let's talk topwater fishing on sand flats. This is one of the coolest types of fishing I've done all in my life, I think. Fishing on sand flats where you're seeing the bass, it's very visual. These bass are fish that are in rips and they're feeding on things like sand eels and, and little silver sides and small bait like that. And you're throwing little spooks that are maybe four or five inch long spooks and they are, can be bass from five inches, literally tiny little schoolies, all the way up to 50 inches. I mean, it is one of the most insane fisheries I've ever fished. And there's only a few places that this actually exists, but if you can find a place where there are shallow sand flats, these bass cruise these shallow sand flats, stage up in little rips, and you can sight cast topwater lures at them and catch monster bass. I mean, there's nothing more fun than this, and it's one of my favorite things to do during the summer. I've found that depending on what bait is in the area, uh, it will change dramatically depending on how aggressive the fish will be, how you know finicky they can be, and uh, that, that all plays a factor into fishing. But one of my favorite things to throw is a little spook called a rebel jumping minnow. The rebel jumping minnow is probably one of my favorite little spooks of all time. I've talked about it a ton because it really is one of the most productive lures for both schoolie sized fish and really, really big bass. As well, I've caught bass up to 45 inches on it. I know they'll catch really big fish. They have horrible hooks, but you can change them out for like 2.0 VMCs and they'll catch crazy big fish on those and you'll be totally fine as long as you work your drag properly. But when you're fishing in these little, on these sand flats, you're looking for a few different things. If there's nothing showing and you can't visually see the fish, what you can look for is little depressions in the sand, little sandbars, and uh, any sort of wave where the, the wave might crash and then not roll for a long period of time. When that happens, there's gonna be holes in places that these bass will end up staging up. The other thing you can really rely on is current. If there's a ton of current and it's hitting a shallower point in the sand and that's creating a rip or a place where this, the, the current is gonna wave up and over the uh, sand, the bass will stage up on things like that as well. And then if you wanna, on the flip side of this, and you're talking about not structure specifically, but just bait and the bass chasing the bait around, things that you can visually see are birds diving. A lot of the time I'll actually see things like turns diving on sand eels and stuff. And when that's the case, you can literally follow those turns around and they'll show you where the fish are. And then I always try to pay attention to where those turns are diving and what's under the water there, because most of the time you'll be like, huh, I wonder why the turns are diving there. And then you walk over there and there's gonna be some sort of structure, whether that is a rip or the end of a sandbar or anything like that, a little bowl in the water, even some rocks that are in the water. Something that those fish will hold on, that is gonna be like a main, spot where you might be able to come back to, you know, at night maybe even catch even bigger fish or every day and there'll be fish in that same area that you're able to see. So always pay attention to where the birds are working and where those bass are staged up on sand beaches. But the main thing about sand beaches is they always change. So in order to be super successful there, you got to put in your time and you got to make sure you know what you're casting at. And if that is the case, you'll be very successful in doing so. But what I like to do is I like to wet wade these sand flats where, you know, you're maybe chest deep in the water and you can catch fish and then you can be ankle deep in the water and you can catch fish. I mean, it's one of those things that when the water's warm, it's, it's awesome. Uh, for gear, when I'm fishing off sand beaches, I like to go lighter. Anything from a nine to maybe a six foot rod is going to be my go-to there. Uh, I like to fish a little heavier because you never know when you're going to hook a really, really big fish. I like fishing like a nine foot rod and maybe a 100 or a 150 van stall on that so I can get it wet and not worry about uh, dunking my reel because sometimes you're going to have to wade through sandbars and then up onto another sandbar and uh, you're going to get a little wet. 
Uh, the other thing I always try to pay attention to is where's the tide, is it an incoming or an outgoing tide. If it's an incoming tide, you always have to make sure you're not going to get trapped out on a sandbar. So always keep that in mind and tides come in really quick on sand flats. Uh, and that is something that you got to really time when you're doing this. Uh, you got to be like, all right, every 15 minutes, I got to move back to the next sandbar behind me. But if it's an outgoing tide, you can really push it. Go out as far as you can, let that tide keep pushing out, and uh, a lot of the time, you'll be able to get into some really good action doing that. Also, places where there are some waves when you're not actually seeing the fish, uh, you can and you cast where the waves are, they can hold fish too. Uh, right in behind the waves, the bass will kind of surf in behind them and feed on anything from sand eels and all that stuff in those waves that are not as strong a bait fish as the striped bass are. It is really one of the most fun ways to catch bass because when you hook them in shallow water like that, they just run straight, so you always get a great fight out of the fish. And even if they're schoolies, to be able to see it visually up on the surface and generally on those sandy beaches, the water's kind of calm and flatter. And uh, it's amazing when you get a big bass that blows up onto the surface and eats your plug. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.